on Divorce Court today. The South Beach lifestyle is taking a toll on this relationship. Ricardo can't keep up with Merlene's expensive taste for designer goods, and she thinks he can't keep his eyes off other women. Merlene Cruz and Ricardo Baez have brought their dispute for Judge Lynn Toler to resolve. Testimony in Divorce Court starts now. Ms. Cruz, Mr. Baez, the two of you have been together two years. You do not want to be together anymore. Ms. Cruz, you have some financial matters that you would like me to deal with and, and some monies that you would like me to award you, and we will talk about that momentarily. But before we do, I'm going to ask you, Ms. Cruz, you say Mr. Baez hasn't been the same mm -hmm. since he spent five months in jail. Why don't you tell me what happened and how he changed and why that's ending your relationship? Okay, before he went in, he had a wandering eye. I remember we went to a family gathering where it was me, my family, and his family. And one of my mom's friends brought their daughter. And he, as soon as the girl came, he totally, like, changed on me. He, he started trying to get the girl's attention. Like, he totally disregarded me. And when I went to the bathroom and I came outside, I see him conversating in a flirtatious way with the girl. And I'm like, how dare you? Like, what are you doing? That's one of the things that bothers me about him. The other thing is that he's very unmotivated. Like, he doesn't want to thrive. He doesn't want to see us have a better car, have a better family. And all he does is want to play video games all day. Like, Is he working? At the moment, he is. Well, that's a good sign, isn't it? Don't you think that he's, yes. he's, he's making efforts? What do you think at 22 he ought to be doing that he isn't getting done? Well, first off, he should go to college or at least try to go to community college to further his education so he could, you know, make more money or at least try to get a second job or, you know, really trying to grind. You are a student? Yes. Do you work? No, at the moment I do not. Okay. Mr. Baez, let's start with her allegations that you have a wandering eye. Do you know what she's talking about? I mean, the thing is that originally, like, when we got in the relationship, I was all over her. But there's been times where, like, there's other attractive women around where I don't know why she feels like when I look up at them, mm -hmm. like, she thinks I'm checking them out. Right. I, like, I want to be with them. Like, I'm, I'm lusting over them. And I tell her, I, I don't lust over any woman. I give you my undivided but attention. But I've caught you, though. I've caught you. When you say, how have you caught him lusting? How, what does he do? that makes you know he's lusting. One time, he goes into the bathroom, and he's there for a really long time, for like a really long time. And I'm like, what's taking you so long? But well, that happens on occasion, Miss yeah. Cruz. You can't course, time his you know, bathroom breaks. But you go in there with your phone. What are you doing in the bathroom with your phone? So I decided to go through his history and his phone, and what do I see? Porn. So that made me upset. Like, I'm right in front of you. What are you looking at porn for when I'm right in front of you? You can have me. Miss Cruz. He's 22 years old. I understand that he's 22, but at the same time, it's a certain respect. How would he like it if I go and I go look at porn in the bathroom or go check out other guys or look at guys in another lustful eye? That wouldn't be right. He will feel offended the, way, the same way I feel offended right now. Really? <laughs> Mr. Baez, at 22, well, before I go there, let me ask you this. What are your concerns about her? I would imagine that it's jealousy is one of them, correct? I mean, yes, like, I don't, I don't like arguing. Like, I want to advance in life. I want to actually marry her, and I want to have our life together, you know? But it's like I, we're constantly arguing over where I look at or what I'm doing or what I'm not doing. And then it leads to, like, times, like, where she dresses, where she likes to show her cleavage, like, a $120 shirt. And it's like, it doesn't really cover anything. I see it like any other shirt. Like, it's just a rag. It's just, you know, something they make. Just do, do, you, do you show a lot of cleavage? No. Do, do you dress nicely? Of course. Why? I dress nicely for my confidence for mm -hmm. him and to present myself to the world, you know. Do you think men look at you and say, oh, she's pretty? Yeah. Why can't he look at other women and say, oh, they're pretty, to himself and keep stepping? No. Because you're out there. You don't know if the guys that are looking you are married or in a relationship. You go out, you, 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 you do your hair, you do your makeup, you look good, and men might look at you and think you're attractive. Why is that a, if you do it, why is that a danger if other women do it and he happens to notice? 
I mean, because I mostly do it for him, so he doesn't have, like, a wondering eye, but I feel like he takes it a step further. Like, he, I feel like he goes and undresses him with his eyes. Give me the most, the, the one example that will make me think, yep, he's doing the wrong thing. Well, um, this was a couple months back when I was working, and he called me up. He's like, hey, babe, I want to take you to lunch. And I was like, OK, but I already have plans with a coworker. So I told, can she tag along? He's like, yeah. So we proceeded to walk across the street to a restaurant. And at first, you know, it was normal. We were ordering or whatever. And then it, I, I felt like he started, like, l like, looking at her, like, you know, lustful kind of way. And then, like, he started Give saying, me a lustful look. Like, like, you know, like, that yeah, side, like, ooh, I want ooh. you, like, yeah, it's like, type, look. So then he proceeded to start staring at her cleavage, like, right in front of me with all the, like, no shame, just straight looking at her breast. And I'm like, what is going on? And I'm looking at him, like, what's wrong with you? So then I needed to use the restroom. So when I came back from the restroom, they were like, I don't know, like, all touchy and feeling, ha, 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 like, having a good old time without me. So that really got struck a nerve with me, like, what, what is going on? Like, if I... Miss, jealousy is like a, a, a bad pair of glasses. You know, when you put on somebody else's prescription and nothing is quite right? Yeah. Yeah. And you're jealous. So no matter what he does, it's going to appear to you as cheating because that's what's in your head. And your head has, has and, and you've adopted that as your perspective. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, I understand. But, like, try to put, like, if he was in my shoes and he sees me laughing and playing and flirting, touching, one of his friends, he's going to think the same way, too. He's going to be like, Hold I don't up, think what are you all doing? that is happening. You know? I don't think all that is happening. I really don't. I think, oh, I think it's happening. It's just happening up here and not, <laughs> and, and not down there. Have you, have you been cheated on in the past? No. You've never been cheated on no, in the past? No, nothing's as severe as intercourse. Maybe I caught them, like, texting or mm -hmm. talking, but as far as somebody going and having sexual relations with somebody, no, that's never happened to me. That's never happened no. to you. Mr. Mr. Baez, why do you think she's so jealous? I mean, I don't... I think that she thinks that since I'm 22, mm -hmm. I, I want to still explore, but I tell her, like, I may look 22 and I am 22, but doesn't mean I'm mentally 22. Like, I feel like an old man inside, where, like, a point where I feel like I already lived my life, I did everything, I just want to settle down and be with her. But it's hard to advance when I'm constantly getting in arguments because I go to a store and I'm shopping and she says I'm looking at the, the person helping her or always fighting over the stupidest things. Next is an expensive purse keeping this couple together or dragging them apart. Your mama warned you not to marry your mate. If she was right and divorce is your best option, call toll free at 1-877-311-2222 or visit our website at divorcecourt.com. Become a fan at facebook.com slash divorcecourt. Broken relationships, real solutions. Divorce Court continues. Mr. Baez, you say Ms. Cruz is irresponsible with money. For example, she bought a $2,000 purse. Mm -hmm. Tell me about her relationship with money. I mean, before I met her, like, I really didn't know about brand names and, mm -hmm. like, you know, things cost so much. Like, I was raised up to know, okay, a book bag is a book bag, mm -hmm. uh, a pants are pants. But when I got with her, she was so accustomed to another lifestyle <laughs> where, like, Gucci, Louis Vuitton, Chanel, all, all that type of lifestyle where just a purse alone costs well over $1,000. Do you buy $1,000 purses? Yes. And you're a student? Yes. Where do you get the money from? I either save up or my mother gives it to me, or I do side gigs like modeling and acting, and then I save up the money and... And you go buy... Do you think that is... Uh, a mature investment to make at 24? You're in school don't have a job, and when you get money, you go give it to some billionaires who already got Make a lot of money richer. so you can care, so you can advertise for them <laughs> as you walk down the street. Do you think that's a wise investment? 
Um, no, but at the same time, I feel like I want to look nice. I want to have nice things. And if I could get that money, you know, I could get more Do you really and think you need a $2,000 purse to make you look good? I don't need it, but I want it. Mr. Baez, are you paying attention over here? Yes, I've heard it. Do you hear it. what I've, I hear? I've heard it Do before. Do you see what I see? Yes, I do. Aren't I mean, you concerned? I mean, <laughs> I, when we got in the relationship, she told me she's a very materialistic. Mm -hmm. She's. Can she, you afford her? I mean, I mean, seriously, can you afford her? Originally in the relationship, she told me, look, I, I, I like purses. I like Louis Vuitton purses. I like having my nails done. I like, you know, having Looking my hair nice, done. like every girl does. I like sandals. I like shopping. I don't buy two thousand dollar purses. I gotta tell you that, and I and I probably really? have a dollar or two more than you. <laughs> and because I think it's, I mean, I buy, I buy nice stuff, yeah. but I mean, I think that you have a wrong impression of what it is to look good. No, I feel like okay. Well, if I don't want mediocre, I want the best. So if I want to, you know, have a nice purse, I have to have the best purse. If I want to have a nice car, I have to have like the best or the nicest car. It's just. You know? Oh, Ms. Cruz, I'm so I, I'm so worried about you. That's a <laughs> terrible way to live. No. The, no, it's called conspicuous consumption, and what it does is it keeps you broke because you have everybody needs everything. I don't have the best of everything. Anybody can go broke at any time if you spend more than yeah. you than you make. And what you're doing is you have to have the best of everything. That means that there's something wrong with how you feel about yourself. No, no, yes, it does. <laughs> no, trust me. Trust me. When Divorce Court continues, does frustration with other online gamers develop into an angry Ricardo at home? Do you agree with Ricardo that Marlene spends money foolishly? Call 1-800-282-1991 to vote now and see if America agrees with your opinion. You'll also receive some valuable offers. Call now. If you would like your case heard on Divorce Court, call us toll free at 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at divorcecourt.com and join the conversation on Twitter at Divorce Court. Divorce Court continues. Ms. Cruz, I, I've been messing with you for a minute. I'm a, I'm a layoff. And I'm going to ask you to explain to me the things that Mr. Baez does that make you believe he's immature and unmotivated to excel in a manner which you think appropriate. Well, like, okay, so I he I know he's, he gets from work and he's tired and stuff, but I I totally believe in okay cooling off and you know hanging out, but it's like a constant thing like. On your, on your time off, why don't you see if you could get into school or try to get a second job? Uh, he, all he wants to do is, is play video games all day. And then when he's playing the video games, he gets so into it that he starts fighting with the people in the game like it's real life. Like he starts cursing at we them. We does the online yes, the on, when you, yes, yeah, yes. Uh -huh, and, he, right, and it right, gets right. very serious, very real. Like, oh, I'm gonna kill your mom and all this other stuff. And I'm like, are you for real? This is like just a game. Mr. Baez, do you, do you, 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 you? Hey, people talk crazy on those online games. <laughs> like they started with me. And they, you think that's crazy? You should hear the crazier things they say to me. So that's just the atmosphere yeah, you're saying. That's, like, the, that's yeah. what's going so on. So then because. I feel like instead of, you know, doing that, you could do more progressive things for us in our future if you really want to be with me like you say you do. If he go, makes any extra money, is, are you going to spend it all on purses? <laughs> no, I'm probably going to put half of it away and then half of it on, on, on things that we need, like, you know, like common things like groceries or expenses, stuff like that. And then where do the purses come in? If you have... Oh, that's, that's my money that I make. That. Oh, so but, he's supposed to support you, and you just support your, it, you spend your money on you, I too. I buy him things as well. He just doesn't really into designing things like that, like how mm -hmm. I am. He really is, like, very humble and low-key, and I'm not. He's, like, my opposite. I know. I just feel like making richer people more richer is not really benefiting me or helping me at all. If you can afford all. it, it's fine, but you can't afford it. It's not disposable income to you. You have to save up to get it. You can't afford it because that's not something you need. It's just something that you want. If you need the best of everything to feel okay about yourself, you're on the road to disaster because you can never afford the best of everything. Nobody, well, some people can, but nobody in this room, including me. <laughs> Do you buy her $1,000 bags? I have. 
And she, the thing about her is that before I got with her, she had like friends, like people that had a lot of money that would like for gifts, they'll give her a purse. They gave her a custom made purse with her name on it and everything, mm -hmm. a $1,200 Louis Vuitton purse. So I feel like the people she hung out before, she used to hang out with a lot of rich people. She got adapted to that lifestyle. Right. But it was never her things. It was their things. Right. They were just, you know, she was just there for the ride. Right. I feel like she wants to be rich and like have all the Who nice doesn't things. doesn't want to be rich? But everybody right. wants to be rich. And you know, the easiest way to get rich is not to spend $1,000 on a bag. <laughs> you know what I mean? Judge Lynn Toller's ruling next. Divorce Court, Judge Lynn Toller's ruling right now. Ms. Cruz and Mr. Baez, I think you're good people. I don't think you want to separate. I think what you want me to do is to get him together, and what you want me to do is to get her together. And hopefully you can get together together and stay together. That's what you were looking to do. Yeah. Um, I'm going to talk to her, and I'm going to warn you. Let me warn you first. You're 22 years old, and you probably, uh, you get, you've given me the impression that you've lived a lot. And you probably have. I don't, I don't know what you, you've done. But let me say this. There is, the world is so huge and so big and so diverse and, 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 and has so much depth to it that what seems a lot to you now won't seem a lot to you 10 years from now. Yeah. I want to warn you about saying I've done enough and settling down at 22. Uh, I have a 22-year-old son. I was 22 once. Actually, I've had a whole bunch of sons that were 22. Woo! <laughs> you know, who they were then and who they are in their 40s, very different thing. You ought to think long and hard about that decision. That's number one. Number two, she's telling you loud and clear she is high maintenance, and she's going to be high pressure about you getting a highly paid job so you can afford her needs. You want to be wary of that. It is a difficult position to be in. If you don't manage to do it, she's going to be on you. She's not going to let you be young and happy and fun. She's going to push you to be her sugar, not sugar daddy, but her, 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 her source of income. Yeah. And I think that's a dangerous, dangerous thing for you. I mean, I want to give her that life. But it's like... Mr. Baez, given her that life, if you're in a position to do so, more power to you. But if you put that pressure on yourself to do so, that is a, going to be a stressor that, uh, of unbelievable proportions that you aren't able to meet at this time. And even if you do, if she always wants the best of everything, she's always going to want you to give her more. Just be wary of that. Yeah. You, know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Ms. Cruz, I know you don't believe me. I know you don't believe me. Yes, I do, Your Honor. I believe everything you just said. About you or him? About everything. Mostly me, everything. him. Yeah. yeah, I believe you everything you You need to you decide said. that you're somebody else, that, somebody that doesn't need a very expensive bag to make them feel good about themselves. There's a lack of security. If you need designer clothes and if he looks up and a woman crosses by and you lose your mind, that speaks to me of insecurity. That speaks to me that you're not really sure you're all that. You could, you know, my husband doesn't watch as a woman. I say, yeah, she's fine. Because it doesn't bother me. I'm secure. I'm OK. I, I can go anywhere and buy just an old trashy person, put stuff in it, which, by the way, I do all the time, <laughs> because I'm secure. I, I don't worry about people judging me, because I've done things to make myself secure. And I have my money working for me, making me money, not making some other dude some money. They got theirs. I need mine. You with me? Yeah. I tell you understand. I so tell you understand. I'm hoping you heard me. I'm hoping you do something what, about what I heard. I'm not even going to talk about the money because I don't think the money is the issue. I think you two are workable people. And you can work together and work this thing out. Having said that, I will say there will be no recovery in this matter, and it is adjourned. Thank you, Marlene and Ricardo agree with the judge's ruling that they can repair their relationship and are working to rekindle their romance. Post a comment or submit your case at divorcecourt.com or call toll free 1-877-311-2222. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter at Divorce Court.